Returning to our top story now on these claims that were broken by nine newspapers in 60 minutes last night and joining me to discuss Liberal MP Tim Wilson. Tim, good morning to you. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, first of all, how troubled are you Thanks, by these claims that China tried to plant one of its spies in the seat of Chisholm? Uh, well, they're very concerning um, claims, uh, not just because there was an attempt, obviously, to infiltrate our political system, but also because of the connection or the alleged connection between uh, in, uh, foreign intelligence agencies and the death of an Australian citizen. Uh, and the only uh, response is obviously to make sure that we uh, establish exactly the credibility of these claims. Um, but this is why the government has taken national security and foreign interference so seriously in introducing the, fo uh, the foreign intelligence uh, scheme to make sure that uh, we are stopping any uh, action within Australia, but also around the electoral in integrity processes we set up uh, before the last election. ASIO knew about Nick Zhao a year ago. He died in March. Does that mean that not enough protections were in place for him? Well, we, I don't know the specifics around his particular case, but what we do know is uh, there are very serious allegations surrounding it. Uh, and if these matters were brought to the attention of our intelligence agencies, then uh, obviously we have to review those processes to make sure that we have those Australians, who, those particularly of Chinese origin, who may be at risk uh, to feel comfortable about coming forward to make sure that uh, any of these examples, should they occur around foreign intelligence, are properly acted upon and are reported. Should all candidates be subject to national security clearance? Uh, I don't believe that because that actually gives too much power to our intelligence agencies to decide who's going to be able to run for parliament. What we've actually done is implement a whole transparency scheme, foreign intelligence transparency scheme, to make sure uh, that there is proper accountability around how uh, uh, foreign intelligence and foreign actors in Australia are held to account. We've installed uh, an in electoral integrity process to make sure that we uh, identify examples of foreign interference and that's the appropriate thing to do. So, you, so you're satisfied that the, 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 the what's in place now is fine? Well, I believe that what's in place now is very important, but I don't believe that we're at the end of any road. We've got a long way to go, um, and we have to make sure that we're constantly reviewing and updating laws uh, to make sure that they're covering, and measures and programs to make sure that we're securing the integrity of our electoral processes, but also making sure uh, that we don't uh, have these uh, allegations emerge because of risks into the future. We have to show eternal vigilance, and that's the approach the government's taking, and certainly the approach that I'm taking. Do you have any concerns about espionage rings donating money uh, via ordinary donators, donors? Well, well I have, we always have concerns around making sure that every dollar that's put into the Australian political process is coming for a legitimate purpose because people legitimately support a candidate as part of a legitimate process of Australian democracy. That's why we established an electoral integrity process before the last election, to make sure uh, that there is uh, proper uh, uh, processes to make sure that if there is uh, foreign, foreign interference, that it's weeded out, it's vetted out, and it's uh, and uh, people are held to account. This inevitably, what, what's going on at the moment? This inevitably shines a light back on Gladys Liu. Do you have any concerns about her history and about her links? Well, well there's simply no basis to make that connection. I'm sorry. At this point, I know that the uh, obviously we're talking about the same electorate, but if anybody has any evidence to bring forward. Uh, then they should do so. Otherwise, to draw this specious allegation is actually um, uh, outrageous, frankly, just simply because of somebody's ethnic heritage. Uh, there are concerns they should be focused on the actions or the allegations uh, made against uh, foreign intelligence agencies and the allegations that are made around how they tried to interfere with our electoral processes, but the focus remains on the individual's concern, and that's where it should stay. Tim, should uh, Wang Li Chung be given asylum? Well, ultimately, we should look at the case extremely seriously and understand the intelligent agencies and department are, uh, but we have to verify the claims that are being made uh, and make sure that it's done through proper processes. Uh, MPs, I don't believe that I should be uh, uh, speculating beyond that because mm. uh, what's in the public domain is, at this point, superficial. Uh, China has said that he's a fraud. Do you believe that he is credible? Well, the, these examples are never straightforward uh, and uh, the situation of individuals is never straightforward. Everybody has a past and that's why uh, we should tread with caution. Uh, but I know these matters, as publicly reported, mm. are being taken very seriously by our intelligence agencies, being taken very seriously, no doubt, by the department. Uh, and we need to make sure that we're making an informed decision as a country. Mm. But 
on, uh, on the face of it. There's a superficially strong case, obviously, particularly if the weight and the evidence stacks up. Do you, this is so delicate politically, uh, this issue that we could have at the moment, particularly if it involves our biggest trading partner being China. Do you have any concerns mm -hmm. as well for someone like Yang Heng Jun, uh, the Australian who is jailed in China at the moment, that he could be used somewhat in all of this? Uh, well, I think that's highly speculative, but I'm very concerned about the situation uh, facing Dr Yang, and that's uh, why uh, many of us uh, have spoken out and raised concern about it. I know that uh, that was a focus of uh, my colleagues Andrew Hastings and James Patterson, uh, that they were raising in the lead-up to their ban and entry to China. So we, should we can't be asleep at the wheel. The government is not asleep at the wheel. In fact, mm. quite the reverse. There's a lot of effort being put into making sure that uh, where there is interference or where there are uh, uh, there, wherever there is action of foreign uh, intelligence agencies operating in Australia, that we're weeding it out, but uh, we have to tread very carefully and we have to make sure uh, that we're doing the right yeah. thing by Australia, but we won't apologise for standing up for Australia and its national interests.